A conversation now about artificial intelligence, the changing fortunes of time, the world of work, whether degrees will matter or not in the future, whether you have the requisite skill for the job you need, how you can tap into the Africa continental free trade area, skills versus degree, and the importance of developing yourself to fit into the world of work. That's fast changing. Maldo Jallo is a development economist. He joins me in studio right now. Maldo, welcome and thank you very much for your time as thank well. You. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in too. a while. <laughs> <laughs> so the world of work is changing yeah. and how do we make sure, for example, that people require the jobs that they need? I know that you're putting together the Africa Skills Hub. Yeah. First of all, tell me what it is and then we'll get into the detail. Sure. So, so the Skills Hub is, is actually um, going to be run by a good friend of mine called Prosper. Okay. And it's based in East Legon, um, mm. the La Baoleshi Road. Mm. Um, and, you know, if you put it into Google, you, you can find it fairly easily. And essentially, um, a hub for young people to go um, and interact with other young people, mm -hmm. learn new skills, mm -hmm. um, be in, an, in, in, in a conducive environment to be able to learn you know, what, what it would take to be successful in the future. Mm, mm. And um, on Monday, you know, we're actually running an event uh, there um, to talk about exactly what you sort of intro mm. um, for us to discuss. And, and I think, um, you know, to answer your question about, about the skills of the future, the, the right term to use is skills. skills because okay. the way in which um, the, the future is going to unfold, at, at least in my opinion, mm. is it's no longer going to be necessarily about qualifications. Right. And it's not going to be about, you know, what, it, what is it that it says on your, you know, on, CV. on your CV mm. on, and things like that. It's important, but increasingly, even now, when you look at a lot of companies that are forward thinking, they're removing qualification requirements mm. from, mm. from mm. Uh, their job descriptions mm. because they're not looking for, you know, they found that a lot of people, especially now with the way the world is going, you can have a master's, you can have a PhD and mm, things like mm. that. But if you don't have the requisite skills, mm. because if you have a PhD in, I don't know, uh, agronomy, yeah, you know, and, mm. but you don't know how to use a computer, mm -hmm. there's a problem mm. because everything is, is, is tech based now. That's right. So, so these are some of the things that, you know, uh, when you're thinking about the future, especially for, for, you know, for people who are having children and, and are thinking about 20, 30 years from mm. now, mm. you know, even for us that are already professionals, it's very important that we equip ourselves with skills right. and not be too focused on... De degrees will still be important mm. because it's, there, there's still a base qualification that you need to have. Mm. But, but the most important thing is about skills, mm. you know, developing yourself with skills, trying to create, um, you know, what I like to call be indispensable, mm. you know, within your space. So try and make sure that within the space that you're in, you have the skills that, you know, make sure that your employer mm. or, or your or partners can't do without you. Because the world is only going to get more and more competitive. So now I have the skill. I'm, I'm prepared for the world of work. I'm prepared for what would change. But I also have the fear that, well, there's artificial intelligence. Yes. And the fact that I could be replaced by a computer the next morning. Yeah. Is that fear real? And what should we be doing? It's real. And, and it's something that you know, I've, I've uh, researched, I've, I've written about. But I'm, I have to say I'm torn. Mm -hmm. you know, I'd like to give you a, a, a strong take and say this is where I stand and, and you know, but okay. honestly, I'm torn. On the one side, I do believe that there will be very serious disruption. Mm -hmm. And even when you look at, for example, the opportunities for economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, prosperity in, in, in Africa, mm -hmm. a lot of the jobs that would have come here in terms of you know, manufacturing and things like that mm -hmm. are being taken by computers in, in, in the US and, and, and in Europe and in Asia. Mm -hmm. um, so th that, in, in a way, you know, mm -hmm. is, is going to be an issue. Now, on the other side, I do believe that a lot of new jobs Mm -hmm. will be created through AI. Because even when you have a computer that's doing a lot of these things, mm. you need engineers, you need programmers, you okay. need, you know. Mm. So, so there'll be new jobs that will be created in order to enable these new technologies to, to mm. flourish. Mm. But the, the problem now is, are we today, mm -hmm. as, um, you know, Africans, as, you know, people, people in, even, even in the West, are we prepared mm -hmm. for those jobs? Are we training our kids? you know, to be ready for those jobs? Are okay. we still teaching them, mm. you know, things that, that were, in, were supposed to be on the curriculum mm. 40 years ago? Mm. And that, that is my real how, worry. How can we make sure that people have the requisite skill mm -hmm. for the jobs that they need? I mean, somebody is looking at being a pilot mm -hmm. in the not so distant future. Yeah. But at the time, maybe 10, 15 years from now, or maybe five, 10 years from now, yeah. the art and science of piloting a plane would have changed. Yes, absolutely. So how do we ensure that people are up to the task 
when when the tax comes so so this is um you know a key point because I think that a key way that we need to change the way we teach people mm. is to get rid of this idea of memorizing and, and, and cramming information in mm. order to reproduce it later. Mm -hmm. Because what that does is you cram today's book, you know, 2021. Mm -hmm. If things change in five years, your brain is not ready to absorb new information because it's, it's absorbed that information mm -hmm. and is repeating mm -hmm. it over mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do, especially in this day and age, is continuous learning. We need to all be perpetual students. You know, we, you don't graduate and then stop learning. Right. You know, we constantly need to improve ourselves because things are changing at a rapid mm -hmm. pace. Mm -hmm. And and for, for a lot of people, mm -hmm. like the example you gave with, with piloting, great mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. what, ten, what needs to happen is you teach them how to be a generally good pilot. Okay, the rudiments. Yes. Okay. And then you give them that foundation and then you allow them to go on and innovate and learn new things because there isn't only one way to fly a plane. That's right. You know, some people maybe when they're landing, they, 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 they start descending a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Some people descend later. There, there isn't, you know, only one way to do it. Mm. So for me, I think in the way that we educate our children, I think there needs to be a shift where we're teaching them creative thinking. Mm -hmm. We're teaching them ways to analyze situations for themselves, mm -hmm. to ask questions, you know, because another, another thing is sometimes, you know, because of our culture as well, mm -hmm. we're not encouraged to ask many questions, especially of our elders, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes even it seeps into the education system where um, students are not necessarily asking their teachers difficult mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. They ask, oh, teacher, this and that. This is the way it is. Take it or leave it. And it doesn't leave room for creative thinking. It doesn't leave room for students to be empowered right. to go even after they leave school mm. and challenge things and innovate in the way that they think about mm. things. You know, so for me, that that is one of the key things that we can do mm. to prepare young people for for the future. One of the key things that also comes to mind is the current state of the work environment, mm. where you get into you're done with school, you've done your national service, and you put in an application for a job. The first thing they're asking you for is a five or two, yeah. three years work experience. <laughs> Experience, yeah. Yeah. not re regarding your skills that you may have gathered. You may have been a stage actor for many, many years. So mm -hmm. your ability to be able to innovate, think on your feet, yeah. go about things creatively yeah. comes to play. You may have played in a musical band. Yeah. You know, your ability to be able to uh, arrange stuff to excite the audience is not taken care of. Right. But you're being asked, what degree do you have? Mm -hmm. What qualification are you bringing? And what work experience do you have? Yeah. Describe for me what the current state of the work environment is and how we can turn things around in a fast changing world. Listen, it's, 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 it's difficult. Um, the number of graduates that we produce every year mm -hmm. is much, much more. I don't have the figures for you, unfortunately, but it's much, much more mm -hmm. than the number of jobs that we're creating every year. And, and, you know, we have also a problem where a lot of people stay in jobs too long. You know, the job, the job market is not dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know, you, people stay in one job. And when I say one job, I don't mean they stay with one company one and company. they move. Mm. One job okay. for one, one sector. a decade, mm. you know, in that same role, doing the same thing. And the dynamism isn't there. So what that creates is a situation where people, there's a backlog. Mm. So the young people, the spaces that should be created for young people to come through mm -hmm. isn't always happening. So now to, to, to answer your first question about, um, you know, so how, how do we go about mm. the, the, you know, you, you come out of uni and directly you need three years experience. Three years to, experience. You know, Where are you conjuring that from? Exactly. And, 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 and what it leads people to do is either lie on their mm. applications mm. or they, um, it pushes them into situations of, of volunteerism, which for me, I think volunteering is a good thing. Mm. But oftentimes what happens is it becomes exploitative where there are lots of people who want take volunteers, especially mm -hmm. positions like, you know, personal assistants mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that, and say, this is my PA, she's volunteering or he's volunteering. And you're not teaching them skills. Okay. You are simply getting them to carry your bags mm -hmm. and, and things like Follow that. Follow you around, buy yes. your food. Right. And, and, the, and, the <laughs> and, and, and the explanation <laughs> for that usually is, oh, as they walk around with me, they move around with me, they are learning, they are mm -hmm. seeing. Mm -hmm. But are you equipping them with the skills they need to get the next job or even to progress within your That's organization. Big, yeah. and, and the thing about that for me is, is, is that, look, there needs to be a shift in the way we think about um, skills. Mm. It, it, it's not just about what you can do with your hands or whether you're good with te technology and things like that. Even communication. Mm -hmm. I, I, I deal with CVs all the time. I always look at job descriptions and things like that. One of the key things that you see in all job descriptions these days is excellent verbal and, oral, uh, and written communication. Yeah. Mm. It's key. 
and and that also in terms of networking is very important mm. and we can't ignore that part because networking 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 i, I was reading somewhere that about 70 percent mm. of jobs are filled through networking that's right that's you know? right so so even if you know and and people would like to talk about it is about who you know Anywhere in the world is about who you know. Okay. I've, I've, I, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to it has work. to be connected yeah. to, to know. It, it, it's, it's the way it is because at the end of the day, we're social beings. Mm. You're much more likely to hire someone that you know and you can trust than someone that has just sent you a CV mm. on, online. Mm. Mm. So, so, so that is the difference. Okay. So for me, let's not shy away mm. from uh, networking, okay. but lean into it. Okay. If you have an opportunity to meet someone like yourself, who's mm, as prominent mm, in, mm. In, 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 the, in the media game, mm. why would you not take that opportunity? So, so for example, there's a student now who is thinking, I, I need to pass my exam, I need to mm. write my dissertation, I need to present it, I need to be focused on my education. So there's a small uh, soiree somewhere, a cocktail somewhere that somebody invites me. I don't think I should go. I have an assignment to, uh, the deadline to meet. That, <laughs> personally, mm. that mentality needs to change. Why because that soiree is just as, I would argue, is mm. just as important to your future okay. as that exam. Okay. Let's say you do the exam instead of getting 70%. Th this is not really an exam. This is like an assignment that could have been done, submitted, sure. and then you can go to the soiree. Yeah, but I, I mean, you need to find a way to do both. Because mm. honestly, the soiree is just as important. Because right. for me, networking is so, I, I cannot tell you the amount of doors. You were talking about earlier, you were talking about you know women opening doors mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you the amount of doors that have been opened for me mm -hmm. just simply by speaking to people, being around people, being in the right place at the right time, going to a soiree. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been out in the evenings, you know, somewhere with, with friends, mm -hmm. and I bump into someone and we end up having a conversation, and that Monday I'm meeting them in their office. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's, I, know. It, it, I know that feeling. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so essentially, if we're not teaching our, our young people mm -hmm. to lean into networking, we're not setting them up for success mm. because what we are doing is we're giving them theory and we're not giving them the practice. Right. Right. Because in theory, mm. I, f the theory is important because if I sit down with someone, you know, like yourself, mm -hmm. I need to come correct. I need mm -hmm. to know what to mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. But then the practical is you need to learn how to approach someone, how to be able to relate to them, how right. to build rapport. Mm. Because that's just as important to your future because the jobs aren't many. Right. So what will give you that edge mm. is the networking. Maldo knows uh, how to program stuff on the computer. He knows how to work the softwares. Mm. I know how to have a better conversation. At what point do we collaborate? Because if you look at our educational system, it creates some form of competition. It does. Maldo has to take the first position, I take the second position. Yeah. The next time I have to try and outdo Maldo so I become first and become second. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing in the heads of most of our, or nearly all of us. Yeah. How do we imbibe the spirit of collaboration so that Fantastic we can point. move to the next point? Fantastic point. I think um, our, our, you know, our generation where there's so many ways to collaborate, even if you're not in the same place, you know, mm. Zoom, all mm. these things, mm. you know, it, it should make us a more collaborative generation. Mm -hmm. But the, the issue is sometimes, even where there are avenues for collaboration, collaboration right. there is a reluctance to do so because of the way sometimes, again, our, our culture comes in, 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 into play. You don't want to let people know what you're working on. You want to wait until it, materializes because if it fails then mm. people will laugh at you I, I don't think that's the way to go mm. i think uh, most of the time if just by speaking to someone about what you're doing they can give you tips right. they can add to it right. and and that point you made about one person knows how to program mm -hmm. the other person knows how to communicate, network and communicate yeah. mm. sometimes that is the best partnership to build a business and mm. i'll tell you why tell me when you go to a meeting mm -hmm. and you're pitching your idea the investors want to know two things is this somebody I can trust and somebody mm -hmm. that can go and pitch this to other people and get money and be successful? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's the... That's the first one. The first, first. one. Mm. Are these people competent and can build the technology okay. that they're that's saying the, they're that's going a to programmer. And that's the programmer. Mm. So by working together, because if the programmer goes alone, he's not going to be he successful. He can't explain himself. Exactly. Mm. Because he's too technical. They'll mm. say, ah, what's... What? You know, You're confusing us. Aha, thank you. But then if you have the, the one, the speaker, the mm. one that can come and, you know, build, paint a picture in the investor's mind mm. of what they're trying mm. to do, then you get traction and then they say okay but how does the system actually work then the programmer says well this is what you do that is right, what we do right. and that partnership mm. i've seen it even even if you look at the highest stage you know um people always talk about steve jobs mm -hmm. right but they don't talk about his partner mm. right he, he had partners that were 
technically sound. Right. Steve Jobs was also incredibly smart. Right. But what he was good at was presenting the ideas, mm -hmm. coming up mm -hmm. with design ideas, being smart about it. Now, if you need one and you need the other mm. together to be able to be successful. And, and what I would urge young people to do, especially in this day and age, mm. is if you see somebody that complements your skill in, a, in, in that way, work with them, collaborate with them, sit down with them, have lunch with them. Mm. Because honestly, it's the only way that you're going to scale your idea, your business, mm. your opportunities, mm. is by working with other people. You need to put us in a room and t teach us this. Where, where, where can we meet <laughs> and have this conversation? No, um, the, 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 the Yota Skills Hub is, mm. is, is, is in East Legon. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, like I said, on Monday, 5 p.m., mm. there's, a, there's an event talking exactly about this. Okay. You know, um, if you go on, um, on, on social media, Skills Hub Accra. Skills Hub Accra. Yeah, so okay. at Skills Hub Accra, you okay. can find the information on there and, and RSVP mm. and join us. I'll be speaking on, on the, the panel. Okay. And um, there'll be other fantastic speakers there mm. as well. And like mm. I said, my, um, you know, my, my good friend and, and the uh, curator of, of mm. the space, mm. uh, Prosper, is, is also will right. also be available. So it's so, on Monday? Yes, it's on Monday. Okay, so we find PM. it on our Skills Hub Accra on yes. social media. Yes, Facebook, exactly. Instagram, Twitter. Exactly. You find it. All okay. the same, yeah. Maldo, I'm grateful for you. Thank you so morning. much. I appreciate and keep it. doing a great work. Maldo Jallo Cheers. is a, a political and development economist and has joined us here. You know him. He's uh, one of our very regular faces <laughs> here who comes to dissect issues on the economy and all of that.